Hi, my name is Mark Goodman, and I am the author of Future Crimes. Everything is connected, everyone is vulnerable, and what we can do about it. And before writing this book, I actually spent a career in law enforcement. So I served as a street police officer, investigator. I worked with Interpol and as an advisor to the FBI and the U.S. Secret Service. And broadly, I've been focused kind of at the intersection of crime and technology and following all the very interesting and innovative things bad guys are doing to exploit the good folks and their tech. It's sort of the culmination of 20 years of work. Uh, when I was a cop, you know, we took an oath of office and on the side of the police card said to protect and serve. And that was something that I took really, really seriously because I don't like seeing, you know, the average Joe or Jane get hurt um, by somebody who is out to get them one way or the other, whether it be some sort of physical assault or robbing them, stealing their money, etc. And today, while we may have the perception that crime is down, as it turns out, a lot of it has moved online, right? Whether it be identity theft or credit card thieves and the like. And so what I realized is folks needed some good information on how to protect themselves. and. As I look out on um, the future and the horizon and kind of look where technology is going, I had a sense that the threat is also growing, right? So future crimes is not just about the cyber threat that we face today, but it's about what's coming tomorrow and how we can start to protect ourselves today. People look at the cyber threat today and like I said, they focus on, oh, they stole my credit card. But what they don't realize is that we are in the early days of technology, right? We are in the first minutes of the first hours of the first days of the technological revolution. So today we have actually a relatively small internet, even though it seems like technology is all around us, it's growing, growing and growing. And we're about to add almost 200 billion new devices to the internet, according to a study by um, Intel, the computer company, and another company by Cisco says 50 billion new devices. And that's going to be called the internet of things. And so we see that hackers are not just going after the things that we have connected to the internet today like our smartphones or our laptops but increasingly they're hacking uh, refrigerators and cars and pacemakers and photocopiers and all these other devices that are connected to your question about how organized crime and terrorists are using these and abusing these technologies in future crimes, I talk about not just the internet and cyber, internet of things, but I go into next generation technologies. All the super cool tech that's coming down the pike. So that's robotics and artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, genetics, synthetic biology. And I tell really, I think, compelling stories about how bad guys are already using this tech. So I might say, oh, genetics. And most folks might say, well, I don't know anything about genetics. The good news is I'm just telling you stories about how criminals are abusing these devices developments in science. So for a very specific example, we've known for some time that the military has a drone program, right? That they use drones with armed with guns and bombs to kill people. It turns out that it's not just the government that has access to these tools. Bad guys themselves are also using drones. I'll start with one organized crime example. So it turns out that the narcos in Mexico, the, the drug dealers and the big cartels down in Mexico, are actually using drones to fly drugs into the United States. So just about 10 days ago, we had a quadcopter drone that was loaded with 12 pounds of methamphetamine flying across from Mexico and it crashed right on the border to Texas. Why did it crash? Because the drone was only rated for six pounds of meth and the bad guys used 12 pounds of meth, so it crashed. But that was just one drone. It turns out that the narcos are also using fixed wing aircraft to fly drugs across the border and there they can carry many, many uh, hundreds of pounds across the border. And according to a study by the DEA, each one of those fixed wing aircraft unmanned drones carries about $2 million worth of cocaine across the border. So we're definitely seeing bad guys starting to use robotics. As to who's responsible for these technologies and how they're used, I think many people are responsible. We're all responsible for in one way or another. The manufacturers that produce these devices need to be aware of how they could be used and try to prevent potential risks. The general public certainly needs to be attuned to what's going on. And of course, there's a role for law enforcement and government. So we all have a certain role in some of these. You were just talking about the incident that occurred a few weeks ago at the White House where a drone landed on the front lawn of the White House. And it was kind of, uh, 
compelling because it was the first time that it actually happened. I have to say I was a bit disappointed by the response of the director of the Secret Service when he was asked on CNN, well, what are you going to do about quadcopter drones? Right? You can buy these at Radio Shack. You can buy them, well, Radio Shack's not going to have business, but you can buy them at Costco, right? You can buy them at Best Buy. So these devices are going to be ubiquitous. And even though they seem like toys, they have some very significant and serious capabilities. What surprised me about the Secret Service's response to the drone that landed on the White House lawn is the director uh, was asked, well, how are you going to protect the president and maintain his privacy at the White House? And he said, don't worry, we have a very significant plan in place. We're going to grow taller trees with lots of leaves so that people won't be able to see into the White House. And I just had to hang my head and shake it because if you think tall trees are going to protect us, you know, from the uh, growing number of drones and robotics in our lives, you kind of are missing the big picture. So I think there's a great opportunity for the public to pay a there's a great opportunity for the public to play a very significant role in its own security. Right now, we tend to say, okay, the police will protect us, the government will protect us, but what about the people, right? This is a government by the people, of the people, for the people, and I think that we have a really cool and interesting role in maintaining our own safety and security. And we've been doing this for a while, right? You know, towns used to have night watchmen that would stay up on the big, tall uh, fences and walls that would overlook the city to protect people. And communities have had neighborhood watch programs where neighborhoods would watch out for one another. But I think in the age of the internet, surely we can do much better with that. So I, my belief is that our security is way too important to leave to the professionals. And there are some great examples out there of crowdsourcing security for good. And I'll just mention two. One is down in Mexico where the Mexican public that is fed up with all the drug dealers and the violence that they're facing in their communities, right? There have been over 50 thousand narcotics related homicides in the past six years. So 50,000 people killed as a result of the drug war. There people are using open source tools like Google Mapping to be able to map out the narcos where they're doing and crowdsource an intelligence system so that the police and law enforcement can follow up which is very cool and interesting. And then there's another organization called the OCCRP the Organized Crime, Corruption, and Reporting Project, and they use both journalists and citizens to report on dictators, how they're abusing their people, and also how they're stealing the national wealth. So here's this dictator in Africa, He's, his wife just got a new plane, his son's just got three new Rolls Royces. They're documenting all of that, and they're making cases which eventually can go on to um, global tribunals where these people can be brought to trial in The Hague as a result of various war crimes and crimes against humanity. So I think this technology allows people to get much more involved in cool and interesting ways in their own security.